Hello everyone, welcome to this product school webinar. I am Ritesh Ranjan, Senior Product Manager with Atlassian. Today I'll be talking to you about product-led growth. Over the next 20 minutes, I'll share some of my learnings from building a growth engine that starts from the product and aims to keep that running for the long term. You can find me on Twitter at first rights. Uh, and if you can, if you have any questions, email me at my email address. First off, let's talk about growth. We all as companies or as PMs want it. We want to see a steep straight line growing high and far to the right. All business models are designed to achieve this. However, growth is seldom linear. Things are dynamic, customer needs change, competition increases, and technology keeps changing. All these things change, and pace of this change is accelerating. I'm particularly interested in software products and digital business models. Growth of software product and of software as a service, or SaaS, has enabled completely new models of growth, one which I'll be covering today, product-led growth. Product-led growth is a way of achieving sustained growth which emanates from the product. It is, a, it is the shiny little object around which all organizations of a company need to move. With the advent of software and new delivery models, a growth model focused on the product is feasible. With digital products, a customer can easily use the product. It allows a low cost trial, something that was not feasible earlier. To make this a success, all orgs need to focus on the product. Thus, product is leading the growth itself. In the rest of the session, I'll talk about my learnings on how a company can grow from the long term by leading with product-led growth or PLG. One thing to clarify over here, product refers to the shiny little object that we are trying to increase adoption or increase revenue or increase users usage or increase a matrix in a meaningful way. It is different from the discipline, which I'll be referring to as product management or PM. <clears throat> Before jumping into product-led growth uh, in more detail, uh, just a brief about myself and my journey so far. So I am an engineer turned product manager I uh, started my career working on telecommunication systems and mobile phones at Samsung. Uh, I developed some, some very cool uh, 3G technology at that point uh, and then moved to Nokia uh, to work on the wireless modem. Nokia is also where I transitioned from, uh, transitioned into a PM role, um, which continued through Walmart and Atlassian now. At Walmart, I built uh, online grocery delivery product. Uh, and currently I'm a senior product manager at Jira. So overall spent about eight years in product management. That's just a little brief about me. And now let's get back on, on, to, on the main topic for today. So to understand product-led growth, it's important to understand other models that exist. These models have been extensively used and they continue to be relevant today. However, their relevance for software products is decreasing. Let's quickly look at some of these models. First, we have a sales-led growth. This is focused on building a sales team that will take the value of the product to the customer. For deals with large enterprises, this is often the favored method as enterprises need the confidence and the ability to reach out quickly when needed. A second model is marketing led growth. This is focused on spreading the words about the benefits of the product far and wide. While earlier this could be done on television or print advertising, we now have new models for, uh, for marketing uh, which is around social media, search engine optimization, or influencer marketing. 
this is an evolving field and it remains a popular growth model. So a third model which I have put over here, uh, project-led growth is not a growth model per se, but I've included it here because of its relevance to software development. Project teams are often focused only on the delivery of the product or a feature of the product. They may not be so interested in its eventual benefit to the customer. Overall, these models apply, don't apply so well for software products. And, and hence, new models have come which, which, which apply better to a software product. Additionally, software enables other capabilities that enable cheap, cheaper, more targeted, and more useful product growth models. So, if I simplify growth down to the very basics, okay, I'm talking about really basic, then we can ident identify some steps. I identified four simple steps where I try to distill it down to the very basic. First off, we want to acquire customers easily. Okay, getting, uh, solving a customer problem and getting them on board is step number one. But we don't want just a few customers. We want to get a lot of customers. Once these customers are there, we want them to use our product frequently. We want them to use it very often, uh, use it for large transactions, use it, tell them, tell their friends about it. We want them to come to our product very, very frequently. And lastly, once we have these customers, we want them to stay as our customers for a very long time. This is what we as a company or PM would want. However, ultimately, we want, however, ultimately, the customer also wants something similar. Once they have found a solution to their problems, they want to stick to that solution. They don't want to go out and find another solution. So as long as the, as, as long as the solution remains, remains relevant to them, they will stick with us. Um, and, and, and as a company, it's our responsibility to keep solving for them so that they stick with us. So it's a mutually beneficial uh, synergy that we can have. So there are four step, so this, this is my four step guide to building a product led growth engine for any product. The first step is to solve the customer problem. Not just solve the problem, but to really dig deep and solve the customer problem. You need to understand the customer. You need to understand what their goals are, what are they trying to achieve, and then give them a solution that will help them achieve that. That would be the step to acquire customers. To measure such a solution, you would track KPIs around how your product is being used. You want customers that are engaged and they use their product, your product a lot. A great example of such a product is Dropbox. It has solved a great customer need and, and, and I personally love this product. Uh, before Dropbox, managing files across multiple devices used to be a major pain. I remember I would use a lot of things from uh, emailing things to myself, uh, carrying around a USB stick or uh, you know, uploading files to different URLs so that I can access them from other places. Dropbox changed this completely. It understood the need and built a solution that worked across multiple platforms. It gave an experience that I was familiar with. It solved my problem. It was intuitive and overall easy for me as a customer to adopt it. The next step uh, to growing is you want to acquire a lot of customers and you want to acquire them with very minimum spend. 
the best way to acquire customers is to let them use the product and for them to see firsthand the value that they can get from the product. Trying before buying has been used for a very long time. Think of taking a test drive for a, of a car or going to a showroom to see a demo of the product. So trying before buying has been there for a long time. What has changed is that with digital product, we can take this to a new level. We can let the customer play with the product completely and for an extended period of time. Thus, a pricing model like freemium or a free trial works well over here. This would be step two to building a PLG team. Let the customer use the product before they buy. To measure this step, you would track KPIs around customer acquisition cost. Or, or you would, so you, you want to track the customer per customer acquisition cost. So a matrix like CAC works well over here or customer acquisition cost. Across various SaaS companies from Dropbox to Zoom to Trello, many SaaS companies have adopted and given their products into the hands of users for free. Customers get to experience a full feature product. Um, additionally, for companies, this doesn't add a lot to their cost because as a, as a nature of software industry, as a software product, it has a very low marginal cost, essentially zero. So, but once the customer has experienced their product, they are most likely to turn into a paying user. So this is a picture of the Brown sisters. This photograph is first in a series of 40 pictures they took year over year, uh, which shows their commitment uh, to, this, uh, to this journey. And I think this is the kind of partnership that you want to establish with your customers. However, th that is not an easy thing to achieve. To ensure that the customer sticks with you, you or the product needs to be relevant to them. It should continuously meet their needs. Uh, and, and, and that need is an ever changing. Competition is ever improving. And at the same time, switching costs are decreasing. So to build that long-term partnership with your customer, you need to ensure that you are focused on the customer and you're really solving their problem. To achieve this, you need to start with teams that are organized cross-functionally and emanate from the product, okay? So cross-functional teams that can consist of uh, product, engineering, design, marketing, uh, business, and, and basically everyone is part of the team. These are not siloed organizations anymore. And then secondly, you task them with a customer oriented goal. So, uh, so, so, so this team will now be thinking not about my, my work is done or my work is done when this is done. There, this team's work will be done when a customer achieves a goal or a customer matrix is met. So to measure the success of this phase, you would track KPIs around customer retention rate or the counter of it, a low customer churn rate. Uh, to have, uh, talking about uh, the delivery team or an engineering team, uh, their role also changes in this model. They are no longer about just delivering a project and then moving to a next one. But their role is now to ensure that a customer matrix or a customer benefit has reached. The final step is to build a flywheel that connects various pieces to improve the customer experience. It feeds the learning from the customer experience and from various parts of the customer journey to build an overall better product. The flywheel focuses on the product and the customer experience. And to keep that flywheel running, 
you need to continuously listen to the customers, identify their problems, and use that to build solutions that in turn improve the product. With the product is in its center, you feed any part of the wheel and you can improve all parts of the journey. To measure success of the flywheel, you would use a long-term value uh, generator of the, uh, for the customer. And one such measure could be the customer lifetime value or CLV. Many companies have visualized their business as a flywheel. And one of the famous ones is Amazon. So here is a visualization of Amazon's flywheel. In this flywheel, we see multiple loops bringing back the customer experience and learnings from various, uh, various parts of the journey to improve the product and the customer experience. So uh, if, if, we, if we take one of the loops, let's say the inner loop, you improve the customer experience, which will bring you more traffic. Once you have more traffic in a marketplace model, you will have more sellers, uh, which will improve your selection, which is thus improving the customer experience. So improving by focusing on any part of that journey, you can improve the whole, whole system and you get a growth um, out of this. So to conclude, this is my recommendation to build a product-led growth model for your product. You start with solving the customer problem. You, then you start focusing on building a, a low-cost customer acquisition model. You try to keep your customer for the long term and you retain them for the long term. And lastly, you build a flywheel so that learning and uh, the customer feedback from different parts of the journey can all feed into the, into the product experience, the customer experience to generate, uh, to generate faster growth. So thank you for, the, for your time today. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, do leave a comment and I'll try to answer them offline or drop me an email. Uh, hopefully some, this was useful and you'll be able to apply um, some of this to your uh, product and your companies. Thank you.